Hello everyone. Uh, today I will show you the first inverse guiding series internal multiple elimination algorithm for a multi-dimensional subsurface. And this slide shows uh, where this uh, presentation sits in a uh, processing tree. And here shows a field data, uh, here shows one, one of the field data example for the ISS free surface multiple elimination algorithm. And data is from uh, Mississippi Canyon Western Chico Challenging Dataset. And the left panel is uh, uh, input data, and the right panel is uh, after ISS free surface multiple uh, elimination. And we can say that uh, this result shows that uh, ISS free surface, uh, free surface multiple elimination algorithm can effectively remove the free surface multiple. And here it shows the uh, uh, first field data example for ISS internal multiple attenuation algorithm. And the data is also from uh, Mississippi Canyon Western Chico challenging data set. And the ISS internal multiple attenuation algorithm is the most capable algorithm today used in industry for internal multiple removal. And you can predict all internal multiples with correct time and approximate amplitude and without knowing any subsurface information. And then you, and if the primaries and the internal multiples are separated, <coughs> now we can use internal multiple attenuation algorithm and adaptive subtraction to remove the internal multiples. Now when the internal multiples are proximal to or interfering with primaries, as we say in this uh, field data example, here in the left part of the fig figure shows the input data, and the middle part of the uh, figure shows the predicted internal multiples. And the right part of, of the figure shows and the data after internal multiple attenuation and the adaptive subtraction. And this is a historic and very impressive result. That it shows that the ISS internal multiple attenuation algorithm can predict all internal multiples with correct time and approximate amplitude. Yet there's a concern that the adaptive subtraction uh, because when the internal multiples are proximal to or interfere with the primaries, the, depth, the criteria of energy minimization or depth of subtraction can fail. So there's a concern here, the uh, adaptive subtraction may damage the primary. So in order to reduce the concern and provide the assurance that the primary is not touched, uh, we need an internal multiple elimination <coughs> algorithm which can predict the both correct time and the correct amplitude of the internal multiples. And the internal multiple elimination algorithm is a part of the three-pronger strategy proposed by Wegland 2014. And uh, uh, my colleague uh, Jin Wu has discussed the pre-processing uh, for onshore yesterday. And my colleague uh, Zhen Zhang and uh, Yu Changshen has discussed the pre-processing for offshore with numbers on the cable yesterday. And the initial idea for ISS internal multiple elimination algorithm uh, is, uh, is proposed by Wagner Madison in 1998. And there are several progress made in the last few years to identify higher order terms in the inverse scattering series for elimination without requiring any subsurface information. There are early ideas uh, discussed in Ramirez 2005 and Herrera proposed the elimination algorithm for internal multiples generated by the shallowest reflector for a 1D Earth. And in this presentation, we will show you the uh, elimination algorithm for internal multiples <coughs> generated by all reflectors in a multi-dimensional Earth. And my colleague Xin Wu Ling will discuss an alternative eliminator with estimated, estimated model down to and across the shallowest reflector in the next presentation. The ISS the inverse scattering series has a promise of achieving seismic data processing jobs without any subsurface information. And distinct subseries can be isolated from overall series to achieve different seismic <coughs> data uh, processing jobs. And subseries that's associated with removing multiples 
uh, ISS pre-surface multiple elimination of subseries, and ISS internal multiple elimination subseries. And this picture shows a free surface multiple. <coughs> and we can say for a free surface multiple, it has a downward reflection as a free surface. And we know uh, where the downward reflection is, and we know the information of the downward <coughs> reflection. But for internal multiples, here this picture shows two internal multiples. And internal multiple, different internal multiples can be generated by different reflectors. And we don't know where those reflectors are. And we don't know the information about those reflectors. So that makes the removing internal multiples much harder. And the subseries has to work harder to eliminate the internal multiples. And the unique advantage of the inverse scattering series internal multiple elimination is that we no subsurface information is required. And the first term in the series is the ISS internal multiple attenuation algorithm, which can predict all internal all first all internal multiples generated at all reflectors at once with perfect time and approximate amplitude. And the initial idea uh, uh, proposed by Wagner and Manson uh, is to an analyze the attenuation factor, which is the difference between attenuation and the elimination. And I'll discuss uh, this attenuation factor later uh, in detail. And the idea is to use higher orders of the data to remove the attenuation factor <coughs> without knowing or needing any subsurface information. And Herrera Ramirez uh, following the initial idea, identify terms from a series to remove the attenuation factor when the shadow is a reflector, or 1D normal incidence. And in uh, this work, we extend uh, that to a multi-dimensional algorithm for all reflectors. And my colleague Xin Lin also uh, uh, developed an alternative eliminator with some information uh, down to, uh, with with some information about the shallow is a reflector down to the generator. So next I'll take you through an analytical example uh, in Wegman 2003 to show you the difference between attenuation and elimination. And here uh, we have a 1D, play, uh, 1D normal instance uh, uh, analytical example. Uh, and the model has two reflectors. And we can say the reflection data contains uh, two primaries. The first, uh, has a, the first primary has amplitude R1, which is a reflection coefficient from the first reflector. And the second primary, uh, when it travels down to the Earth and back to the receiver, it has uh, two transmission coefficients related to the first reflector, that is T01 and T10. And the uh, reflection coefficient has on the second reflector. Uh, R2. And the third event is an uh, internal multiple. And we can say when it travels down to the Earth and back to the receiver, it experiences several ph phenomena that include uh, T01, and then a reflection R2, and then another reflection minus R1, and uh, another reflection R2, and uh, finally a uh, transmission coefficient T10. So here uh, shows the reflection data. And we can make a Fourier transform of the data into frequency domain. And then uh, D1 of Kz, which here Kz is 2 omega over the water speed, is equals uh, D of omega. And then we can take a Fourier transform to the pseudo depth domain to get B1 of Z. Uh, here we can say B1 of Z is closely related to the data. And here it shows uh, B1. And then uh, we, have the, we can use the B1, which is the data. We can put the data into the internal multiple attenuation algorithm, which is shown in, uh, uh, in the last equation here. We, we can say we can put the data on the right hand side of the equation and without any subsurface information. The algorithm will give us a prediction of all internal multiples with correct time and approximate amplitude. And then for this data, for this data the, uh, the first order internal multiple is predicted 
is shown here. And we can compare it with the uh, uh, actual internal multiple in the data, which is the third event. And we can say that the prediction has two more transmission coefficients in showing the red circle. And that's the difference between the attenuation and the actual internal multiple. That is the difference between attenuation and elimination. And that factor is called the attenuation factor. And next I'll show you where this uh, actual transmission coefficient came uh, from in the prediction. That is when, uh, when the algorithm combines the three sub-events uh, shown on the left part of the picture to predict an internal multiple, you will have two more uh, transmission coefficients shown in red. So that's an attenuation factor. And here, another figure, the second figure shows an internal multiple generated as a second reflector. And we can say when the generator of the internal multiple becomes deeper and deeper, the attenuation factor will contain more transmission coefficient. And here shows the generalization of the attenuation factor. Here, J is the number of the reflector that generates the first order internal multiple. And AFJ is the attenuation factor for first order internal multiples with a downward reflection at an adjacent reflector. And we can see here the AFJ contains the transmission coefficient from the shallowest reflector down to the generator of the internal multiple. And uh, next, uh, first I will show you an uh, idea to, re to eliminate internal multiples generated from the shallowest reflector. As we discussed in the previous slides, the, uh, for internal multiples generated as the shallowest reflector, the attenuation factor is AF1, which is, contains two transmission coefficients. So that's the difference between elimination and the attenuation. So elimination uh, equals the attenuation divided by the AF1. And, uh, because the attenuation factor of F1 is transmission coefficient and it's related to the reflection coefficient. And finally, you can, we can expand that into a series. So here, uh, the first term is an attenuation algorithm and uh, here in the red circle, R1 is related to the data and the even powers of R1 is related to, it corresponds to the even powers of the data. And uh, Ramirez Herrera, uh, following that idea, find high order terms in the inverse scattering series uh, to remove the attenuation factor for internal multiples generated by the shallowest reflector. So in this work, I will show you uh, the multi-D elimination algorithm for internal multiples generated from all reflectors. And for uh, here, uh, because the attenuation factor is the difference between elimination and attenuation. So the elimination should be equal to attenuation divided by the attenuation factor. And notice here, the attenuation factor is not a number. Actually, it's, uh, for different internal multiples generated by different reflectors, the attenuation factors are different. And uh, uh, the attenuation factors are related to the transmission coefficient. Uh, what we are doing here is we want to arrange the attenuation factor in a way we can use higher order terms of data to remove, remove the attenuation factor. So the uh, uh, transmission coefficient are related to the uh, reflection coefficient. And we can arrange uh, the denominator into a couple of terms, R and R primes. Here, R prime is an amplitude of the primaries in the data. And here, uh, in the picture here, we can see the, the amplitude of the first primary, R1 prime uh, equals R1. And the amplitude of the second primary, R2 prime, contains two transmission coefficients and uh, R2. And the, the third primary, uh, the amplitude of the third primary, R3 prime, uh, contains four transmission coefficients and uh, R3. And the data contains primary and uh, uh, multiples, and, multi and primaries contains 
our primes uh, for what for discussion here, we will focus on uh, uh, prime rates here. And later you will say that higher order terms in the inverse scattering series can accommodate both prime rates and the internal multiples uh, in the data. Uh, here uh, we have a couple of terms of R and R primes, and the data uh, contains R primes. And here we need another uh, part, which is uh, R. Uh, but we don't have R, so that we assume we have an intermediate function G here, which contains R. So we can use a couple of terms of the data and the intermediate function G to remove the attenuation factor. And let's see in the next uh, uh, step, uh, we'll find a way to use higher order terms of the data to uh, calculate the intermediate function G. So G is also a higher order terms of the data. So uh, here, uh, now we have a uh, way to use higher order of data, that is higher order of P1, to remove the attenuation factor. The attenuation factor is the difference between attenuation and elimination. And here shows the expansion of the uh, attenuation factor. And uh, here's an expansion. We can say in the elimination in this series, the first term is the attenuation algorithm, which is three orders of uh, data, three orders of V1. And the first higher order term is shown here, which it contains two more R primes, which is related to the uh, generator of the uh, internal multiple. And in this algorithm, we can zoom in this part in blue circle. And this is two more orders of the data, two more orders of B1, which provide uh, this extra R prime square. Here, uh, we, we need a small positive number epsilon, which defines the resolution, and then defines the meaning of lower, higher, lower, and the meaning of self hits. So this R prime square, the self hits is uh, two more orders of data uh, with integral in that episode. So here shows another term in the series, which is attenuation uh, times a couple term of R and R primes. And we can see the R and R primes is related to the uh, shallowest reflector down to the generator of the internal multiple. And this extra cover term can be provided uh, by this part in a uh, uh, blue circle. And we can zoom in this part. And we can say it's uh, uh, because it's uh, related to the shallowest reflector down to the generator. So this is an integral from minus infinity to the generator. And because it's a couple of term of R prime and R, so it's a, a couple of so it's a uh, order, it's a B1 times the intermediate function G, which B1 is a data, and G is a higher orders of the data, as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide. So for now, we can say each term in the series, in the series is a higher order of the data. So the elimination algorithm is a summation of all the different orders of the data, and without any subsurface information. And here shows the flow chart of the uh, elimination algorithm. Let's say you have a data in space-time domain, uh, which is a field of xs, xg, and t. You can take Fourier transform into wave number and frequency domain. And, you, uh, and next, you can times the obliquity factor minus 2iq uh, to get p one And we can then use p one using the data to calculate the attenuation factor, which is B3, which is the three orders of the data. And also we can use B1 to calculate the higher order terms uh, of the elimination algorithm, which is higher order of the data. And we can add the higher order terms into the attenuation algorithm. And that is the elimination algorithm that can predict internal multiples with both correct time and the correct amplitude. And then we can eliminate internal multiples in the data. 
uh, the, uh, as we discussed in the previous slides, the primaries in the data, which in B1 will provide the elimination capability, the internal multiples in the data uh, will diminish the elimination capability. But this is a, a limitation, limitation anticipated by the higher order terms in the inverse scattering theory. And the idea is benefited from the data compre comprehensive attention algorithm proposed by my colleague Chao Ma and Hong Liang. And that is using B1 prime, which is B1 plus B3, which is still a uh, higher orders of the data. <coughs> and the idea is came from identifying the actions in the series. And we use the B1 prime instead of B1 for the internal multiple elimination algorithm. That is actually using higher order terms of the data that to eliminate and accommodate both primaries and multiples in the data. And here it shows uh, how we can use B1 prime instead of B1 plus, in, instead of B1 for the elimination algorithm. Here we can use the data B1 uh, for the attention algorithm it will give us a prediction B3, and then we can calculate the B1 prime, which is B1 plus B3, and use that for the internal multiple elimination algorithm. And uh, here I will show a numerical test for elastic BP data in a layered model. And uh, I would like to thank Western uh, Chief of and uh, Dr. Kostov on a wonderful opportunity of internship. And here, uh, the model is uh, four reflectors, and it's an elastic model. And here is the, the input data. And next, I will show you uh, different events in the data. But the algorithm, the ISS internal multiple attention algorithm, and the ISS internal multiple elimination algorithm, does not need to know the uh, uh, model and does need doesn't need to know the uh, events in the data. It will just put the, all the data into the algorithm, and it will predict all the internal multiples. And the red arrow pointed to the chip primary. Okay. And uh, uh, here the arrow pointed to the converted primary. And this arrow pointed to the internal multiples with only p history. And this arrow pointed to internal multiples with S components in uh, its history. So here I show a window of the data from uh, 2.8 seconds to 3.1 seconds. And in this region, there are three events as two internal multiples and a converted wave primary. And the second figure shows the attention algorithm prediction. We say it uh, predicts the correct time and approximate amplitude of uh, this internal multiples. And the third figure shows the elimination algorithm prediction. And we can subtract uh, the attenuation prediction and the elimination prediction from the input data. And figure five shows the data subtract the attenuation algorithm prediction. And figure six is the uh, shows the data subtract the elimination algorithm prediction. And we can compare figure five and figure six with uh, the primaries in the data. And we can say uh, after internal multiple attenuation, there's still, in figure five, there's still some residues. Uh, but for after internal multiple elimination algorithm, elimination, let's say in figure six, the internal multiples are completely eliminated and the primaries, and the primary is recovered. So this is the exact uh, problem we are addressing here. That is when internal multiple and the primary are interfering with each other. Now we need an elimination algorithm to predict the both correct time and the correct amplitude of the internal multiples to completely eliminate the internal multiples. And next, uh, I will show you the first uh, MATD uh, internal multiple elimination test. Uh, here shows the model. Uh, because the elimination algorithm is uh, 
very computer intensive. So we use a relatively a small data. Here we, uh, the data has 32 short gathers, and each, each short gather contains 32 traces. And here shows one short gather. The left uh, is the uh, one short gather of the input data. And the middle figure is the attenuation algorithm prediction. And the right figure is the elimination algorithm prediction. And we can plot uh, one trace uh, of these uh, three figures. Uh, and we can say here in a uh, in, uh, picture below, the blue line is the uh, uh, multiples in the input data. And the red line and the green line is the uh, attenuation algorithm prediction. And the red line is the uh, elimination algorithm prediction. And we can say the elimination algorithm predicts a more accurate amplitude of the internal multiples. And when internal multiples are interfering with the uh, primary, as we say in this field data example, this is the exact uh, situation where we, when we need the internal multiple elimination algorithm to provide the assurance that the primary is not touched. Uh, the, uh, the, the ISS internal multiple attenuation algorithm and the elimination algorithm are uh, uh, very computer intensive. And the ISS internal multiple elimination algorithm uh, we need needs much more computer power than the ISS internal multiple attenuation algorithm. And there are discussions in uh, Michael Perron 2007 and Chang Fu Al 2014. And next, uh, in, uh, in the end, I will provide you uh, a sort of a recipe for what you should do before internal multiple elimination and what you should do for internal multiple elimination. And here, uh, this slide shows what you should do before internal multiple elimination. That is, assume you have a data uh, in a uh, space time domain. Uh, first, we need to remove the reference wheel field, and then we need to remove the ghosts, and then re remove the free surface multiples. And now we have a data without reference wheel field, uh, without ghosts, and uh, without free surface multiples. And then we can use that data uh, to uh, predict to, for internal multiple elimination. At first, uh, uh, we take a Fourier transform of the data into real number frequency domain, and, time, and then times minus 2iq, the obliquity factor, get E1, and then calculate the attenuation algorithm, E3, and higher order terms in the, in the, in the, in the, scattered, in the elimination algorithm. And then add the higher order term to the attenuation algorithm, that will give us an elimination algorithm that can predict uh, both correct time and the correct amplitude of the internal model. Uh, so, uh, the uh, RSS internal multiple elimination algorithm is a part of the three prongs strategy, that is, a direct response to the current seismic processing and the interpretation challenge when primary and internal multiples are proximal to or interfering with each other in both onshore and offshore place. And uh, uh, the elimination algorithm we developed here uh, is, uh, retains the standalone benefits of the ISS internal multiple attenuation algorithm and can predict all internal multiples at once, in other words, without requiring, and requiring no subsurface information. Thank you.